Looks like we somehow managed to sort things out, and casualties were kept to a minimum. They said they weren't picky about who they used as their test subjects. Because of them, the people of Ramire Village. There you are. That armor. So, you're the Flame Emperor. Yes. I believe you have met my subordinate, the Death Knight. Oh, we've met all right. But back to you. You're the one responsible for the destruction of this village. Do not get the wrong idea. What in blazes does that mean? It is true that I am working with Solon, but that does not mean our objectives are the same. Had I known they planned to do this, I would have stopped it. You have my word. Your words are meaningless. Now, I'll have to insist that you accompany us back to the monastery. I cannot abide that. However, if you wish to join forces, I will hear your plea. What? If left to their own devices, they will commit countless more violent acts like this one. Do you not wish to prevent that? With the sword of the Creator on our side, Solon would not be a threat. Pity, though not unexpected. Pray that you do not live to regret your choice. Gerald, Professor, have you seen Lady Edelgard? What's wrong, kid? Huh? Oh, damn it! He's gone. Hey, I've been meaning to talk to you. Since coming to the monastery, you've changed. You've been angry since we first arrived in Ramire Village. And you look so happy when you're instructing the brats. Before the monastery, I'd never seen you bear your emotions like that. Not once. Then perhaps it's a good thing we came to the monastery, if only so I could see your face lit up like that. Or maybe there was never any reason for us to leave the monastery in the first place. Ah, uh, I've put my foot in my mouth, haven't I? Though I suppose it may be nearly that time. Come to my office when you next have a moment to spare. There's something I need to tell you. Just what was that about? I can't recall a time of old when you were at the monastery. I wonder what is hiding in the mist that is your past. Professor, I don't know if this is appropriate to say, but admirable work out there. I really believe we did all that we could. Geralt said the same thing. We must try to stay positive, even through the horror. I hear the so-called Flame Emperor appeared in Ramire Village as well. Hubert told me that you spoke with him. Really? Is that what you want, Professor? That makes sense. It's hard to trust someone without knowing who they are, or how they're connected to all this. Even if he wants you as an ally, his objectives are still unclear. If the Flame Emperor truly wishes to make use of your power, perhaps someday he will appear before you without his mask, and you can look in his eyes and decide what you believe. Adel, I need to ask you something. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I interrupt? No, not at all. If you'll excuse me, Professor. You did well handling that awful business in Ramire Village. 
I am certain the goddess shares in our grief at the senselessness of that calamity. More importantly, I was shocked to hear that our own Tomas was actually a dark mage. I must reflect on our blindness. You surely must. You failed to notice that a rat was hiding in your home. Pathetic! Who are these wicked foes? How did Tomas escape your gaze? Tomas came to the monastery 40 years ago, by recommendation of House Ordelia of the Alliance. Around eight years ago, he went back to House Ordelia, before returning to the monastery once again, just last year. After having worked at Garrig Mach for decades, why would he betray us now? Just what did he hope to accomplish? Yuritsa became a professor at the Officers' Academy because of a recommendation from the Imperial nobility. Supposing that he is the Death Knight, that means that our enemy is an organization that has taken root in at least two territories. In the long history of the Church of Seros, no, long before even that, there have been an endless number of threats to the peace of Fodlin. Yet those who oppose us still operate in the shadows. Their identity is a mystery. I believe that Solon and the Death Knight are merely one part of a much larger whole. A threat to Fodlin's peace? That means we have no choice. We have to stop them all! I have truly come to rely on you. I believe that the monastery will remain safe so long as we have you. We do not yet know the enemy's objective or whereabouts. For now, please devote yourself to preparing for whatever comes next. That is all for today. Professor, please wait. I know there is much that you still do not understand. However, one thing is clear. You possess great power. I believe that you are destined to be a source of great hope for all. In any case, I expect great things from you. Walk this world proudly, dear Professor. May the goddess Sothis protect you. The goddess Sothis? Is that what she just said? Is something the matter? I see. In that case, farewell. Do not say something that we may regret. She... I... What exactly am I? For now, let's leave this place. Please, go! Part 1. White Clouds. Ethereal Moon. The Cause of Sorrow. Though most stars will still glimmer in the crisp winter air, the Blue Sea Star has gone back into hiding. Legend states that the goddess prays for peace from her home in the heavens. In the town of Garrig Mach, the anniversary of the monastery's completion nears, and the people's prayers intensify ahead of the Millennium Festival, still five years hence. I'm here, Professor. That delightful smell. My favorite tea. Is it yours, too? Sorry to trouble you. I'll finish this tea. Huh? No.
Thanks for the tea, Professor. Let's do that again sometime soon. Hello, Professor. You're really on the move today. A lot to get done, I take it? I'm happy to help. Uh, tell me, is there anything I can do to lighten your load a bit? Oh, surely there must be something. Don't be shy about asking for help. We're practically siblings, after all. Cut from the same cloth. I was raised by Gerald just as you were, so we should have no trouble getting along. Huh? Did I not mention that? How thoughtless! What an embarrassing gaffe! My parents died when I was small, and I came to live in the monastery. It was an aimless existence. But sometimes, a knight would pass by, wearing magnificent armor. That knight was Geralt. And the first time he laid eyes on me, he made me his squire. What was he thinking, huh? No kidding. I don't think I'll ever fully understand his logic. Later, I heard that the squire preceding me had died of a terrible plague. I looked a bit like him and was about the same age, so Gerald thought me a suitable replacement. A little nutty old Gerald, there's no doubt about that. Quite a character. All that was more than 30 years ago. How time flies. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. You never asked him? Well, Gerald hardly seems to have aged since then. In fact, over drinks he once told me... Uh, <laughs> perhaps that's a story for another day. At any rate, that's Gerald for you. One of a kind. I don't think there's anyone else quite like him. Right. Well... Now you've heard my whole story. I hope that you understand now why I feel such a strong sense of attachment to you. If you're ever in a bind, just give me a holler. I'll help however I can. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> well, I'll uh, let you get back to it. But truly, if I can take anything off your plate, don't hesitate to let me know. <sighs> it's just, I was wondering why it seems as if no one values their own lives. Why do we fight until we die? Why do we kill without hesitation? I hate it. I don't like taking lives, or even the sight of blood. In the last battle, some of the soldiers under my command died for foolish reasons. Those soldiers could have pulled back. Instead, they kept fighting and were overrun. Am I supposed to be satisfied with the victory alone, even at the cost of such life? Exactly. I don't see the point. Honor? That's a foolish reason to give your life. Glory? Even worse. Just the thought frightens me. I'm not suited for battle, Professor. I'm happy you feel that way, but... It seems like so much in our world is decided by who wins or loses a fight. Very little is accomplished via diplomacy or even simple decency. Professor, you take the time to lead me and teach me like this every day. Could the reason be that you don't want me to die on the battlefield? That's a bold statement, Professor. But for whatever reason, I want to believe you. You really are a strange person, you know. Professor, I wish to ask something of you. I... I don't want to kill. I don't want blood on my hands. I just want to lie on my back and soak up the sun filtering down through the trees. And I want you to help me make that a reality.
We are planning a grand ball for this month. I'm sure the students will be most pleased. Yes, certainly. However, we must not devote all of our time to frivolity. We have a new mission for you. We have found evidence of someone sneaking into an unused chapel. No, there is nothing of value in that building. We do not yet know what the intruder's objectives are. This month, your class is tasked with guarding the chapel and investigating these intruders. With the recent state of affairs surrounding the Holy Church, we cannot afford to overlook any abnormality, no matter how seemingly trivial. I am ordering a seasoned knight to assist you to ensure the safety of the students. In times like these, I am afraid we must always expect the worst. Reporting for duty, Lady Rhea. I thought you two could use the time to bond. And to speak of important matters. <laughs> Appreciate the thought. Bear in mind that Geralt has a separate mission of his own. He will join you once he has finished it. It's true. I'll be away from the monastery for a while. But when I return, I'll come and watch you work. I'll be looking forward to I've passed, have I? Solon, was it not? And the Flame Emperor. It is most clear that something has transpired. And it relates to you somehow. Or is the fault my own? And you're just caught inside the wave? Sothis, the goddess of this world. I bear her name. Hmm, how confusing. As though my head has turned to mush. I can't believe it. How can I show my face to Lady Edelgard after this? That's what you get, Hubert. If you rested like me, you wouldn't collapse from exhaustion. As much as it pains me to say it, you're right. 
but to be looked after <sighs> by you of all people. That might be the worst part of this. I don't know how to feel, to be honest. So for now, let's pretend I thanked you. Oh, come now. Even I wouldn't abandon someone who collapsed. You would have in a heartbeat if anyone else had been around. Ah, yes. Quite accurate, Hubert. Why would I ever bother to be a decent person if there were anyone else I could foist the duty upon? If your situation turned bad, it would have been an absolute hassle. I could never just leave you there. If that were the sort of man you truly were, we could never be friends. <laughs> but if we weren't friends, I probably would have just left you. Shame you're so reluctant to do any real work. You're actually pretty good at this. Made sure I was comfortable, checked carefully for injuries, even carried me here yourself. If only you'd apply that knowledge of yours so proactively and thoroughly all the time, you'd be a tremendous asset to the Empire. There you go again. I see no problem with staying just the way I am. But think of it this way. In an anthill, 20% of the ants are asleep at any given time. And it's not because they're lazy. Far from it. When the working ants become tired, they go to sleep and the others wake up. That's me. I'm the ant who rests so I can work later when other people are tired. Maybe that's true. But even if it is, it's still just a fancy way to say you let others do all the work. Consider me unconvinced. I'll consider you a bother and leave it at that. You and Edelgard work far too hard. I mean it. Take a break now and then. If you both collapsed, I think it'd be too much effort for me to bother with. Get some rest, Hubert. Not as much as me, of course. <laughs> Fine. You were rather quiet in the last battle, Caspar. Not a single war cry to be heard. It was almost as if you weren't even there. I did it just for you, Hubert. Isn't that what you wanted? Weren't you the one who said my shouting would cause problems? Yes, I was. And at the time, you seemed intent on ignoring my advice. Well, that was then. Recently, my behavior caused trouble, just like you said it would. I was shouting the other day and some enemies heard. I pretty much gave our position away and left us open to attack. I mean, it turned out fine in the end, but someone could have died if things had played out differently. Anyway, I did some self-reflecting and realized that I probably shouldn't shout so much. A decision that I'm proud to say I came to all on my own. <laughs> All on your own, huh? It was a bad decision. Being too quiet on the battlefield is extremely dangerous. I'm sorry, what? That's the exact opposite of what you said before! Having seen you fight in silence, I have no choice but to accept the truth that your shouting is vital. What in the world are you talking about? We've all grown used to the way you fight. Your battle cries help morale and your instructions rise above the din of battle. I would go so far as to say that the soldiers under your command would be lost without the guidance of your booming voice. I really don't get you, Hubert. You inspire people. The benefits of your shouting outweigh the risks. Something wrong? Don't get too excited. You'll be ambushed again. Then I guess I'm gonna have to fight some guys while shouting! <laughs> that might have been the wrong approach. Oh well. No cure for stupidity. I suppose I'll just have to rein him in myself. <laughs> Hey there, Hubie. I've been thinking about our conversation the other day. And I've just got to know, do you really love Aidy? 
If it's one or the other, I suppose it would be closer to love than to hate. Why? Ah, uh, I knew it! That's why you work so hard for 80. Oh, Hubie, I finally get you. You're just another servant suffering from unrequited love for their mistress. <laughs> you completely misunderstand. Unrequited love. Do I really look like the kind of drooling simpleton to have that kind of motivation? I'd like to say yes, but I know you just argue. Fine, Hubie. Tell me your situation. My situation is simple. I am walking a path. Oh, do go on. Everyone has a path in life. Lady Edelgard has shown me mine. It is just beside her own. So we walk together side by side. We stride ever forward, yielding to nothing and to no one. So... you're sharing the same dream? <laughs> Bluntly, yes. But it's more than just a shared dream. I have many feelings toward Lady Edelgard. Gratitude, respect, awe, empathy, trust, hope. Okay. I was teasing you, but I gotta say I'm just a little bit jealous of you and Aidy. That you're able to embrace these feelings and stride forward along the same path. You're lucky, Hubie. I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to experience anything so utterly... operatic. Why not? Because I figure the best quality in a partner would be that they make me happy. And loving another is really about wanting to be loved. I'm pretty sure that's different from how things are with you and Aidy. <laughs> Hmm. Looking out toward Bridget, are you? Yes. There are some times I cannot stop my thoughts from going home. It will be much time before I return. Bridget feels... far away. It is quite a long way. To say nothing of the sea that lies between here and there, being unable to return must further add to the distance in your mind. It is as you say. When I return to Bridget, I will be the new queen. I am wishing to help relations with the Empire. I believe you will be successful. You may not be Lady Edelgard's equal, but you are resourceful enough to make an excellent queen. And unlike Lady Edelgard, you will not be forced to harden your heart. Not Edelgard's equal? Is that what you are saying? Understand that I mean no disrespect by this. But it is a fact that you are far beneath her. Make no mistake about what would happen if you were to raise your banner in revolt against her. She would crush you mercilessly. That is not a difference of equal... of... equality. It is a difference of power. Even if our homelands were on equal footing, Lady Edelgard would still prevail. I can see with clarity the difference between me and Lady Edelgard. But that has no matter. I would never lose. <laughs> How amusing. For your sake, you had better hope you are right. <laughs> Crimson, maybe? May I suggest Vermilion instead? Vermilion? I know, I see it. You don't have to say it. I've got no talent at all. I said nothing about your talent. I simply suggested Vermilion over Crimson. Do you know Vermilion? It's just a softer shade of Crimson. I believe it would... Oh, forget it. This is your artistic vision and I am but a meddler. I am going to read my book and leave you to your art. Um, no, it's fine. Say what you want to say. It's good advice. I'll use Vermilion. Thank you. Well, I'd best be heading back. Phew! Finally done! 
I think. All finished? Everything looks a bit faded, doesn't it? Ironically, Crimson may have been a better choice after all. The sense of distance on the petals is a little strange. Perhaps you should pay closer attention to such details as you paint. A preliminary sketch would do wonders. Still, it... Oh, forget my pedantic comments. You really do have potential. <sighs> Bernadetta? Hopeless! A waste of charm! Just burn the whole thing, Bernie! Break your stupid brushes and never paint again! Huh. Perhaps I should have kept my thoughts to myself. How did you know Dorothea was an orphan? I hear she buttered up some noble, and he enrolled her in the academy. Does someone like that even belong here? <sighs> I suggest ignoring them. <sighs> Lynn, don't scare me like that. You seem less scared than surprised, but that's quibbling, I suppose. As for those two gossips, unimportant. I suggest forgetting all about them and their petty words. Join me for a meal. I've been the target of a lot of gossip, and eating generally makes me feel better. Don't pretend we're the same. If I could brush it off so easily, I would. It doesn't seem particularly difficult. Where's the problem? Is this about your pride? No. Not even a little bit. What then? Lynn... Please just go away. I want to be alone right now. That's fine. But your life is your own business. It's not something that can be affected by the petty words of a stranger. Ah, sorry. I kept talking, didn't I? I'll stop now. Please do. Bernadetta. <laughs> Lady Edelgard, what can I do for you? I appreciate all the effort you're making to overcome your fear of me. Your dedication is commendable. However... I'm just getting in your way, aren't I? No, but Bernie, you're just an intruder. Nobody wants you around. Stupid! Oh. Bernadetta. Yes, the problem you keep running into is that you don't listen to what people are really saying. That's why your efforts are in vain. You need to listen instead of jumping to your own conclusions. Are you listening to me? Yes! Then why aren't you responding? Um, I wanted to listen until you were finished. Uh, sorry! Were you finished then? I was. Then may I please scream now? By all means. But please try to make it a fairly quiet one. Just a tiny one? Uh. Um, wait. What was I upset about again? That's weird. I forgot why I was about to scream, and now I don't even need to. What a nice feeling! You're trying your best. I know that. But even so... But, but what? What did I do this time? I'm so sorry! Whatever it is! I'll go to my room and never bother you again! Wait! You didn't let me finish! I was only going to say that... Bernadetta, if you have a moment, I would like to discuss what happened before. Oh, my nemesis! The hour of fate arrives! Help! I am not here to hurt you! You need not even open the door. 
just listen to me. I don't have to open the door? Is this a truce? Okay, okay, I like truces. Thank you. I would like to apologize for sticking my nose into your business the way I did. I thought you might be unhappy all cooped up in there, and that maybe I could help. But I've had time to reflect on what you said, and I realize I was mistaken. Oh, um, thanks for caring, but I'm fine, actually. I see that. I suppose that is what I'm trying to say. I should not have pushed you to do something that you did not wish to do. And for me to frighten you like that? That was unbecoming conduct for a noble. Maybe a little bit. Frankly, I am embarrassed by my behavior. I disgraced myself. As for my injury, you need not feel guilty or afraid. The sprain was a result of my own thoughtlessness, not anything you did. I have always strived to be a good person. But I suppose all that striving was for nothing. I have failed in my duty as a noble. Um, Ferdinand? Yes, Bernadetta? I don't really know much about this sort of thing. But you should say things like that about yourself. It wasn't all your fault, you know. I'm to blame too. I hurt you. And I'm sorry. Really, it is fine. It healed quickly. And it wasn't for nothing either. I am not so sure. I do like my time alone. Actually, it's more of a need. But you're right. I also need to venture out every once in a while. Maybe if I work as hard as you do, I can try it a little more. Yes, keep working at it. You are already much more outgoing than you used to be. When I mess up, or even when it's just a bad day, it's hard for me to step outside. I'm too scared. But the next day, I try again. Because I know that one mistake doesn't ruin everything. So you're still... I mean, just because you... That doesn't mean... <sighs> I don't know how to put it. But that's how it is. So, um, the end. <laughs> what a graceful end to the conversation. Hey! Come on, that was serious! <sighs> At least I got you to laugh. <laughs> Hello, Burn. Oh no, what did I do this time? Did I offend you? Is this your revenge? No, not at all. I just want to talk. If you promise not to resort to violence, I'll do whatever you want. Burn, I've just been worried about you, that's all. When I said I was your friend, you ran away, saying something about your father. Remember? Um, vaguely? I know you've lived through some bad times. If you could tell me about it, maybe I could help? Oh, I don't know. Please. Your father's not here now. Whatever it is, you're safe to tell me. <sighs> All right. My parents told me never to befriend a commoner. They said commoners are scum, and that they'd crush any that tried to come near me. Hang on, scum? They called me, I mean, commoners. They called us scum? Yeah, but once, a long time ago, I did secretly make friends with one, a boy. When my father found out about him, he disappeared the very next day. I heard he was found beaten half to death. I never saw him again. Since then, I've been terrified of making friends with anyone Commoners especially. I... I never knew that kind of thing really happened. You hear stories, sure, but... Oh, oh Burn, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm proud to be your commoner friend. <laughs> Dorothea! Hey now, relax. There's nothing to ball about. If your dad tried to beat me up, I'd return the favor, and then some. <laughs> return... the favor? When I was in the opera, you better believe I had run-ins with the most wicked, terrible men. 
I survived kidnappings, attempted murders, all kinds of stuff. But you know what? I broke those guys' arms. Snap! <laughs> it was a thank you for all the trouble they went through trying to hurt me. You're incredible, Dorothea. <laughs> so, now that you know I can defend myself, can we be friends, Burn? All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taking care of some weapon maintenance, Petra? You seem completely absorbed. Yes, taking care of the weapons has great importance. I cannot argue with that. That weapon there, is it from Bridget? No, it is a weapon of Dagda. But the people of Bridget use... I mean, used them often. Fascinating. I have read about the weapons of Dagda, but this is my first time seeing one in person. Lots of weapons and fighting techniques came from Dagda to Bridget. Ah, so Dagda to the West had a big influence on the Bridget Archipelago. I am fascinated by foreign fighting techniques. Would you consider teaching me sometime? I will. But it is difficult to explain fighting with words. We can try sparring, maybe? Yes, a practical demonstration. I would be quite grateful. Let's have our beginning, then. Perhaps we should stop there. Oh? Do you think you have understanding of the fighting techniques from Dagda? Yes. Now that I have experienced it firsthand. I used to look down on foreign fighting styles, but I was clearly remiss. The footwork, the nimble way you shift your weight is extraordinary. I will have to remember those moves for the next time I am in battle. Clearly, you have honed your skills through practice. Your fist felt as sharp as a spear. Bridget is stuck in between Dagda and Fodlin. It is of much importance to hone our fighting techniques. I am of the royal family, but I am a warrior before that. I must fight to live and to protect my home. When the alliances of Bridget and Dagda encroached on the Empire, they were always driven back. But perhaps the Empire's victory was due to geographic advantage or divine intervention, rather than military superiority having met you. That is what I think. I cannot help but feel a little disgraced. I held foreign fighting styles in such low regard without ever seeing them for myself. When I came to Fodlin, I felt disgraced from many things that I learned. But there is no disgrace in losing ignorance. We need to be learning and growing with each other. Always. Yes. By working together we can make progress. And both sides need to look ahead to the future. Caspar, that equipment is new. It is suiting. It... it suits you. Oh, um, right. Thanks. You get more strength each day. I do not want to be falling behind. I'm impressed with how much stronger you've gotten, too. More than I have. No, Caspar, you are impressing to me. I want to be training with you. Just hold on, Petra. What is wrong? It's your attitude. How can you act so casual around me? My father killed your father. You shouldn't be able to stand the sight of me. You actually hate me, right? That's fine. I can take it. I completely understand. Just be honest. Give it to me straight. <sighs> If our roles were reversed, I don't think I'd be able to forgive you. I don't understand how you could You are not the one who did the killing, Kaspar. Our parents had... conflict. But we are not them. I have no worry about it. You should not either. I don't need to worry? Impossible! I don't think I'll ever be... You must. If not, the conflict will keep carrying on. If children cannot forgive, it will not ever have an ending. Is that what you are wanting? Well, of course not. I... Please, give it some thinking. I will be leaving now.
Shamir, you are training away from the ground of training. Ah, Patra. Well, it looks like it might rain. I have understanding. Rain training can cause unhealthiness. Can I give you a question now? Sure. You come from Dagda, I think. Why are you working at the monastery? You can tell I'm from Dagda? Oh, I suppose Bridget is our neighbor. As for why I work here, that's simple. I work to live. Rhea took me in when I had nowhere else to go. I'm here to repay my debt. I don't plan to return to Dagda anytime soon. But Fodlin is an enemy for you, right? Are you feeling okay about that? The only ones I've fought in person are the Imperial Army. I carry no ill will toward anyone else. I have gratitude for your answering. You have given me understanding. How about you? Do you hate them? The Empire is your father's enemy, no? And it's Dagda's fault that Bridget got pulled into the war at all. So, do you hate Dagda? Or do you see that as none of your concern? The fault is not of Dagda. My father made his own choice to be joining the war. I cannot say I have no hatred for the Empire, but I do not have any for Edelgard. When I came here, she was always helping me. Makes sense. You can hate a country without hating its people. You speak with such honesty. It is very amazing. I'm not that special. I just don't let emotions get in my way. <laughs> Sylvain. Hi. Why do you look so down? But hey, if you're talking to me of your own accord, can I assume you've figured out I'm not a monster? I wanted to apologize about my treatment of you earlier, Sylvain. I am not normally one to put stock in such rumors. Nothing to be upset about. I mean, I've kind of earned that reputation. I've just... I've got this sickness. When I see a pretty girl, I can't stop myself from flirting with her. Like you, for instance. Oh, I am so sorry to hear of your illness. Perhaps my magic will help heal you. Huh? No, I didn't mean it like that. No? Are you not ill then? You know what? Let's just... Let's move on. Can I take this to mean everything is good between us? Of course. Sylvain, I look forward to getting to know you without the falsity of rumors. Great. Would you like to celebrate our new friendship by joining me for a meal? You would treat me to a feast? <laughs> that is very kind of you. A chance to spend time with a sweet girl like yourself? It's a pleasure. Your voice like birdsong, your eyes clear as diamonds. But above all, I'm drawn to your kind and loving heart. I am a captive to your charms, Flame. I hear that very frequently. Thank you. Yeah, I... Uh, I guess a girl as cute as you would get a lot of compliments. Anyway, what type of meal were you considering, Sylvain? I would love some seafood followed by a delicious cake. Oh, I am absolutely famished, as I often am. Shall we be on our way? <laughs> She's a tough one. Sheltered girls like her usually fall for that kind of stuff. But she's much too savvy, even for a smooth talker like myself. Kaspar, I've been wondering something. Would you be happier if you were the heir to House Burglies? Of course! My brother probably wouldn't be too happy about it, though. I've got nothing against him, and I'd hate to cause him trouble, so I guess it wouldn't make me very happy at all. You may not want to hear this, but your brother is not a good man. He's lazy and greedy, and has always relied on the knowledge that he would inherit a title. That's my impression of him, anyway. <laughs> you don't hold anything back, do you? But to be honest, you're not too far off. He's got good reason for it, though. Our grandfather was really obsessed with his second wife. She has a son who she really wanted to become the heir. In the end, though, 
My grandfather had to step down sooner than expected, so everything went to my father instead. My brother is still really worried about having his future taken from him. That's the price of taking your own desires into account when choosing an heir. The concept of nobility is decaying, and it's dragging the Empire into the ground with it. Wow, this conversation is really going there. You may be right, but it's not like the world is ever going to change, right? It must. I intend to create a world where the best are free to rise to the top and succeed, regardless of their bloodline. The nobility as it is now could not exist in a world like that. I'll make sure of it. What do you think would happen to me in that kind of world? Would you appoint me as a general or minister of military affairs? If you were the best suited for that position, I would. Right, so my life would pretty much stay the same. I'd still have to train, get stronger, and use my abilities to cut my own path. I don't know what I'm gonna do after we graduate. I guess I'll just have to fight for you. Is that so? At the base, the front lines, or wherever we might be fighting, I'll be there with all my might! Ah, you have arrived at just the right time. Care for one of these handmade treats? My goodness, Ferdy. When did you become such a talented confectioner? <laughs> oh, Dorothea, I am hardly an expert. Nevertheless, you have managed to make some tasty-looking treats. Well, it is the first time I have tried my hand at it. Honestly, there were several unsuccessful attempts preceding this batch. I made these pastries to solve that riddle you gave me. The reason you despise me. Oh? You said I was like a bee. The bee is a dutiful worker, just as I am. But the bee inherits a capacious home with a wealth of honey. Similarly, I inherited my fortune. I did not receive it as a reward for my labor. I surmised that perhaps you'd feel differently about me if I earned something all on my own. That was my plan, to emulate your transformation from desperate pauper to successful songstress. All on your own? Did you renounce your nobility? Give away your riches? No, I made these. I obtained all the ingredients on my own, without anyone's help. You mean, you got the sugar and the flour? Yes. To earn the flour, I worked in the fields. To earn the sugar, I carried a merchant's wares. Who did the cooking? You? Naturally. I took on some extra chores in exchange for use of the kitchen at night. I have to admit, that's impressive. Hey, it looks like you had a bit of an accident. Is your hand okay? I burned myself a little while I was baking. Nothing to worry about. Nonsense. That burn will scar, you know. Come on, let's get you to the infirmary. Uh, wait, Dorothea! You have yet to try my treats. You should be fine now, Ferdy. Big shot nobles have to treat their bodies with care just like the rest of us. There you go again. Noble this, noble that. Though you did say it with less disdain than usual. <laughs> Nothing gets past you. As it were, I may have reconsidered you a little. You have reconsidered me? Finally! Just as I had hoped, we are becoming friends. Now then, I propose that we... I only said I reconsidered a little. And you still haven't figured out why I said you're like a bee. Which is funny, because you look like a bee right now. Bye! So, I am still a bee. A completely mystified bee. Ah, Dorothea. What are you doing here? I was actually waiting to see you. Were you going to invite me out to dinner? I accept. Yes, I was. I don't think it would be so bad to share a meal with you from time to time. How about tonight? I'm busy tomorrow. That's fine by me. What are you busy with, I wonder? Girls? And more girls? <laughs> Isn't it an unwritten rule not to ask about such things? But what a curious turn of events. 
Have you perhaps got an ulterior motive? No ulterior motives. If you're worried, we can just pretend this conversation never happened. No, wait! That's not what I meant. I just don't understand why you want my company now, when you've always been so cold to me. Have you perhaps fallen in love with me? Ugh, my stomach just got queasy. You know what? Maybe I'll eat on my own after all. Fine, fine, I get it. You want someone to chase your loneliness away. Something like that, yes. If you don't want to, I'll ask someone else. Don't dream of it. It would be my pleasure, milady. And to be clear, the reason you chose to spend time with me is my family, yes? Or is it my crest? Both? I'm just curious about such things. Say I was a commoner. Would you still have invited me to dinner? Is this really necessary for a simple dinner invitation? Actually, I have a question of my own. Say I was a hoarse-voiced old hag. Would you still be flirting with me? Would you still want to hold my hand and whisper sweet nothings? That's a difficult question. I have nothing against mature women, but... Even if you were an old man, I still would have invited you out. If you were a former noble exiled from his family or an orphan from the streets, my heart cares not. <laughs> just kidding. I just wanted to try saying it. Of course it's better that you have money. <laughs> you little... Yeah, that's probably true. So, Dorothea, about that dinner? It would be an honor to have you join me tonight. And let's not talk about things like this over dinner, okay? Even if I was an old man or an orphan, huh? <laughs> Welcome, Professor. This is the first time I have welcomed you here, is it not? <laughs> there is no need to be nervous. Please, come closer. When you speak with me here in this room, you are not speaking with the Archbishop, but with Rhea. It's just me. <laughs> Such a sweet child. <laughs> My apologies. I should not be treating you like a child. As Gerald's kin, somehow you don't seem at all a stranger to me. Speaking of Gerald, may I ask if he ever spoke of me to you? Hmm, is that so? Unfortunately, I am unable to believe that such words fell from Gerald's lips. I want you to know that you are free to speak candidly. There is no need to spare me from the truth, however harsh it may be. <laughs> Since you are here, shall I tell you about the Gerald that I knew? By the look of it, you haven't heard much about his time at the monastery, have you? When I first met Gerald, he was quite young. Why, he could not even grow a full beard at that point. On one fateful occasion, the band of mercenaries he belonged to fought alongside the Knights of Saros. I was traveling with the knights at the time, and Gerald jumped in front of an attack meant for me. He was gravely wounded, on the verge of death. I tended to his wounds in a desperate attempt to save his life. Thankfully, my efforts were not in vain. Gerald managed to escape a seemingly certain death. I made arrangements for him to receive further care at Garrick Mock. The moment he was deemed fully recovered, I invited him to join the knights. Well, it is not a story I have often repeated. Even at the monastery, there are not many who know that. I tell you this because, to me, you are the child of the one who saved my life all those years ago. And also... Never mind. It is nothing. I simply wanted to say that I trust you. By coming to visit with me today, you have... Well... Suffice it to say that my day is brighter than it otherwise would have been. I thank you for that. <laughs> nope. 
A grim reminder of my sad reality. The other nobles will be fine, I'm sure. They've all been to events like this before. But me? I'm a noble, and I've never even been close to one of these things. Oh, now where did that Ingrid run off to? The ball is soon, and she hadn't even put on any makeup. I was trying to help her out. Oh, you want me to join your class? Hmm, well... I'm already having so much fun in my current class. Sorry to disappoint, but I'll have to decline. when all the students get all lovey-dovey. You're new, but you know about the ball, yeah? I can't bear it. Young love is wasted on the young. They can't appreciate it to its fullest. Ugh. I wish I could fall in love, too. Hello, Professor. I know that look in your eye. You want to ask me a favor. You want me to help out with your class, right? You just say the word, and I'll help however I can. Don't worry about it. You're just starting out as a teacher, right? It's only natural for those of us with more experience to help the younger generation. Great. Just... You I can't... Think. You know, Professor, I used to think I would be comfortable with all manner of experiments, so long as they provided usable results. But when I heard of Solon's work, well, I realized I'd not considered the moral and philosophical limits of what all manner of experiments might mean. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not great with blood. Even when I'm just thinking about it, I feel a bit ill now. the ball. It reminds me of how I met my wife. I was at a village's harvest festival. There was a full moon bathing everything in its cool glow. She appeared out of nowhere, dancing gracefully in the moonlight. A lovely fairy. We soon fell in love and tied the knot. Now we have a daughter who's as bright and beautiful as a sunny morning. So, Whenever I see people dancing, I think of my wife, and my heart does a little waltz.
hope you're up for a challenge. I know why you sat us next to each other. You want to see who can eat more quickly. Ferdinand, please stop making everything a competition against me. I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. like this, but it's been a while, so I'm not sure. I would be liking that greatly. I wonder if Remire Village will ever be the same again. How do you recover from such a terrible event? So many dead, so much destroyed. I can't see how the whole village doesn't just end up abandoned. this about? The ball? Knights don't participate. It's an event for students, but it does pique the interest of some knights in particular. <sighs> Too much merriment. The librarian betrayed us. The death knight is back. Is this the time to be throwing a ball? Thank <laughs> you. 
Should I have held back? Each battle, a chance to grow. You fought well. Must be awful losing to me. be awful losing to me. Legend has it that long ago, a female student from the Academy met with a mysterious man at the Goddess Tower. They fell in love at first sight and were bound together forever after. But that's not the really interesting part. The incredible part is that the man was apparently the Adrestian Emperor himself. Oh, what I wouldn't give to fall in love at first sight with a splendid and powerful gentleman. I want my own fairy tale romance, and I want it now. <laughs> Everyone's in such a festive mood. <laughs> I feel a bit out of my element here. I can't help but worry something might happen while we're all distracted. After all, our enemies are always plotting. 
Still, this air of levity is much more agreeable than the grim atmosphere of late. chances to get dressy. Right. Some scary things have been happening lately. I hope that this month, of all months, is peaceful. The ball is coming up and everything. Although I'm not much of a dancer, actually. <laughs> ah, the long-awaited ball. Finally an opportunity to showcase my exquisite skills on the dance floor. These skills were ingrained in me when I was a boy. My hands and feet move on pure instinct. It's true that Tomas was employed here under the recommendation of House Ordelia. But that's all I know of the topic. I never even seen him prior to enrolling here. Even when he was supposedly in Ordelia territory, I never once saw him there. I'm still feeling bothered by all of this. But... There's not much else I can say about it right now. What? Ah. <sighs> Professor. Excuse me, Professor. May I have a moment of your time? Ah, wonderful. I was hoping you might enlighten me. About yourself, that is. You see, I happen to be quite curious about you. Well, because... There is something different about you. You possess an air of mystery. I could not help but notice when first we met. I am intrigued, to say the least. I find it rather difficult to put into words. Were I to wax poetic, I would say you remind me of the sea. Have you ever been, Professor? The sea is vast, boundless. On the surface, all seems still. Yet beneath that stillness, it is unfathomably deep. Within, it teems with life, yet without, one is lucky to glimpse a fleeting shadow. And yet, all one must do is cast a line to grasp hold of all that life. You cannot see it at a glance, but it is there all the same. About fish, of course. Oh, bother. I got sidetracked, didn't I? Right. About the sea. During a storm, the once calm waters become mighty enough to overturn even the vastest ships. Not unlike you. You are calm. You carry yourself with poise. Yet you wield great power. My brother was uncertain of you at first. He once referred to you as a youth of... dubious origin. Oh, but please do not think ill of him. He is incredibly dedicated to his work. So surely you understand why he would have doubts about one of whom he knows so little. Nobody even seems to know your age. Incidentally, how old are you? Wait, you do not know your own age? <laughs> you truly are mysterious. Hmm, looking at you, it is quite difficult for me to determine. I wonder... Could you be younger than your own students? Who? Me? Well, I am roughly the same age as the other youths here. Be that as it may, it is simply not the case. Oh, by the way! 
You should know I had actually been considering enrolling in the academy for a while. I have endured hard times, but I am so grateful that those very experiences led to my acceptance at the academy. Oh, my apologies. I am sure you have much work to do. I will not keep you any longer. We must speak again sometime, if that would be all right. Have a lovely day. Pardon me. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. Ah, other than the legend of the Goddess Tower, of course. Have you heard the students talking about it? On the last night of the Ethereal Moon, on the same night as the ball, if a man and a woman go to the Goddess Tower and make a wish, it's sure to come true. I have a wish, but I can't find anybody to make it with me. old chapel was supposed to be off limits it was at risk of collapse so they didn't even post guards it's not too strange does that surprise you meh Garrig Mach has lots of places that are blocked off for one reason or another that's true of the underground holy mausoleum as well as the northern woods people call it the sealed forest but as far as I can tell it's nothing special just a forest What? Yeah. I'm glad the Remire Village situation got sorted out. But it's not over yet, is it? And I can't believe old Tomas turned out to be an enemy. Who can you trust anymore? coming up soon. I am so excited. I can't wait to fill up on food while everyone's dancing. I even heard there'll be some prime cuts of meat. Oh, hey! I can't believe I dropped this. Thanks for bringing it to me. It cannot be true that our siblings in arms could turn against us so. However, I will continue investigating members of the church. To think that even someone as senior as Tomas would fall under suspicion. I know not how far to take my search. Yes, a great many strange and terrible things have come to pass this year. I must not dismiss the possibility that someone among the students is behind it all. I have a request. I can't believe this. I'm so angry right now. First it's the Death Knight, and now Tomas, but neither of them are in custody. I can't stand the thought of such evil lurking in the world. We have to do something about this. I have to do something about this. Mercedes locked me in her room for hours earlier. She was slathering pounds of makeup onto my face, saying something or other about the ball. It really wore me out. Hey, hey. Great work in Remire Village, Professor. Who would have ever guessed it was Tomas? Ah, uh, but no. Now isn't the time to get lost in gloomy thoughts. <sighs> I've been thinking of inviting a girl from a different house to the Goddess Tower on the night of the ball. But here's the twist. She's from a family with a much more significant and storied past than mine. 
I wonder if she'd ever stoop to going out with the humble son of a knight. Seems the dastards who set Ramire village aflame have yet to be apprehended. Monsters. Trampling mercilessly over innocent lives. They deserve a gruesome end. Even though there is to be a ball, we still have a mission. It would be nice if this month passed by in peace. Dancing a Fodlin is not the same as dancing from Bridget. The reason is... Maybe that the music has many differences. In Bridget, dancing is different for each person. Our dancing has vigor and ferocity. There is no speech of technique for our dancing. Ah, the ball. It reminds me of my first such event, back in the Imperial Capital. It was held by my father, the Prime Minister. I really showed off my dancing skills. Everyone was quite impressed with me. Hey, uh. gentleman I'd like to invite to a rendezvous at the Goddess Tower. However, I can't imagine he'd be interested in a sheltered ingenue like myself. <sighs> it's hard to pluck up the courage when that's where my thoughts always take me. Right, right. Come now. Another month full of chaos. I've barely had time to catch my breath. What is the objective of Tomas and his ilk? And what makes Flame so special? Does that not bother you? So, Tomas the Librarian was a bad guy? But he always seemed so nice. Oh, come on, Self, you're better than this. You promised you'd be on top of things this month. Someone entered the old chapel. I think the townsfolk used it for feasts and such in the past. With that whole Tomas business, you can't blame the church for being on edge. Indescribable. The whole village burned to the ground. So many were left without even a home to return to. Thankfully, Her Grace the Archbishop has invited those who lost everything to stay at Garrig Mach. I pray that they will be able to return to their once peaceful lives as soon as possible. Until that day, we of the Church must join together and do all that we can to help them rebuild. Professor, the ball 
will soon be upon us. Ah, I can feel my heart fluttering already. I... I have never danced in front of people before. Not even once in all my life. I am very much looking forward to it. Right. <laughs> Last month was... Well, you know even better than I do. I hope this one will be more cheerful. This ball, though, I don't know. It, it's all new to me. Pardon me. Need something? This one? You're all set. This one? You're all set. See you again soon. Hi. Impressive. Nice work. Mark Monastery is said to have been completed during the ethereal moon. Why, 995 years ago, as a matter of fact. That's rather a long time ago, don't you think? Every year, a ball is held to celebrate the founding, and every 100 years, a very special celebration takes place. It's a grand festival involving all of Gerig Mark. It is thrilling to read of past festivals, and I'm rather excited to experience one for myself. Once in a lifetime, eh? The next one in five years will mark a millennium. Should be quite an event. Do you imagine you'll still be here teaching then? Professor, I've been watching your class activities, and I wondered if you might desire my help. Just say the word and I'll pitch in. Of course, I have to be truthful, it's all just a ploy to make it easier to research your crest. Feel free to call on me anytime. I'll be happy to lend a hand. And then you can help out with my class, too. <laughs> it's a joke, Professor. I'd never put a burden on you, a first-year teacher. Tomas wouldn't betray the church. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. There's some people in the church who hate people like me who are from Almira, but Tomas was always real kind. But if he really was Lady Rhea's enemy, well, I'd defend her against anybody, no matter how kind they'd been in the past. All they ever do is cause trouble. We'd best purge the entire underbelly of Garrett Mock. I have looked into Tomas, but I just cannot make sense of this at all. From his behavior up until now, I never would have suspected that a man like him could turn on us. I have also discovered that his appearance has changed. It is almost as if he is not even human. What in the world is going on? Before the ball, 
It is customary that we host a competition of dance known as the White Heron Cup. The students are quite fond of this tradition. Each house must select a representative to compete. Their dance shall be judged by its beauty, grace, and technique. The student, who is deemed the winner, will be given the opportunity to train as a dancer, should they so please. It is a very precious thing, the gift of dance. I hope that you and your students will choose to participate. May I ask a favor of you? in front of people before. Not even once in all my life. I am very much looking forward to it. Have you heard yet about the White Heron Cup? If you have yet to choose a representative, do you mind terribly if I volunteer? Oh, thank you, Professor. I am overcome with joy. Just you wait until my feet touch the ballroom floor. Yes? Do you need me for anything, Professor? I would be happy for some dancing guidance, should you have any. to improve my dancing. Oh. I hear you've chosen your representative for the White Heron Cup. In that case, a word of advice. On an average year, the winning contestant has about this much charm. Charm is important, wouldn't you agree? Who wants a partner with no charm? Not me. Do your best, make sure to put in the practice, and good luck. What's this about? The ball? It's an Alois. He volunteered to judge the White Heron Cup. have thorns.
always nice. Roses have thorns. Oh. 
Professor, I've something I'd like to ask you. I see. That's how it is. Hmm. Professor. Did I do something wrong? Thanks so much! Uh, not cool yet. Yeah! Yeah! It's relaxing here. Should have brought my sewing kit. Let's at least try to work together. I am ready. We got through that without trouble. My efforts were not in vain. I won't forget all I've learned. The battlefield has much to teach. Not a total waste. Hope this is good for something. I always was a quick study. Thank you. 
please wait? For the last time, Flame, the answer is no. You are departing for the Rhodos Coast, are you not? I must come. You will do no such thing. I am not going there to pay respects at the cemetery, but to do battle. With you there, I will be beside myself with worry. It will be easier for me to fight if I know you are safe. But I must! Oh, Professor, you have come at just the right time. Surely it must be fate that you have appeared at a time of my greatest need. My dear brother is about to set forth on a most dangerous mission. Indeed. The Western Church is attempting to seize sacred ground by force. With this action, they are no longer merely believers of a different creed. They are a dangerous threat that cannot be ignored. We cannot allow the holy artifacts enshrined there to fall into their hands. I too wish to be of use to the Church. And I do admit, I am terribly worried about my brother. No matter my protests, he will not allow me to come. Professor, this is where you can help. Will you accompany us both on this expedition? If you are there to protect me, my brother's fears will be allayed. Isn't that right, brother? I suppose your aid would indeed be useful, yes. I knew it! Please, Professor, will you join us? Wonderful. Let us depart at once. belongs to us, the Western Church. You are the heretics. Be gone from here at once. Silence, dog of the apostate. Prepare to receive our righteous blades. I will recapture the monument. Everyone else should focus on removing the surrounding enemies. Wait, brother. I shall accompany you. Prevail. I am Ferdinand von Eyer. I'm on it. Oh no. Stay focused. As you wish. Back to the fray. Let us away. That's my cue. Ugh. Battle. Guide me well. Ugh. 
Hardly worth my time. is worth having. That's so obvious. No use. Yes. Yeah. So it won't work. Hard for nothing.
Lady Edelgard. Unexpected. It is our duty to worship Saint Kiho. We will not allow heretics to come near.
Ferdinand von Eyre. I will prevail. That's my cue. Stay focused. Should I have held back? I'm on it. Research had such results. Practice does make perfect. A fine display. Guide me well. Let us away. Taste the power of the true servants of the goddess. Now!
well. We are no match for them. Brothers. Retreat. Brothers. Help the remaining priests escape. Be the shield that stops these miscreants in their tracks. Do you dare compound your crimes further? There will be no escape for you! The goddess protects us. We will never yield to the likes of you. getting started. Goddess, have you abandoned us? That is the last of them. Flane, will you place some flowers at the monument? Of course, brother. That is what I came here to do. Your assistance is most appreciated. I can only hope that the Western Church will now see reason and abandon this place. But just to be safe, I have retrieved the holy artifacts. We cannot risk them falling into their hands. I will entrust them to you. I must confess, despite the situation, it was a pleasure to return here. This coast has a certain sentimental significance to my sister and me. Yes. This stone monument is not merely here to commemorate St. Keyhole. It is also the grave of my wife. You are safe now, Mother. Finally, you may find peace. I suppose you have earned the right to know, but this must remain between us. Flame is actually my daughter. My late wife and her mother are the same person. Due to certain circumstances, it is more convenient for us to masquerade as siblings for the time being. There are many who would seek to harm Flame due to the unique blood she bears. Falsifying her identity is necessary to conceal her from such individuals. Mercifully, I happen to look quite young for my age. We make rather convincing siblings, do we not? Mother loved the coast so much. She and I came here together often. Fishing was her favorite pastime. I used to sit and watch while she cast her line. I remember it fondly. You did so love to eat the fish she caught as well. Fish is my favorite food, it is true. Doing no small part to mother. 
I still come here to fish from time to time, using the skills my wife taught me. It reminds me how deeply I appreciate those years, and how I wish I could return to them. We cannot turn back the clock, Father. We must live our lives fully, in the present moment. <sighs> You're right. That is what she always said, isn't it? Dwell too much on the past, and you may be unable to move forward. Come then. Let us return home. Goodbye, Mother. I love you. I shall bring flowers again for you next time. It's raining, Professor. On rainy days, the wound I got from the Death Knight hurts like fire. Every time it aches, I get angry. You understand, yeah? I'm sure they had their reasons to kidnap Flame, but still... Did they really need to stab me? What'd I have to do with it? They ruined my beautiful porcelain skin. Worse, they took off before I could stab them back. So rude. That's rather enough, Manuela. Cease your moaning and give the professor a break. Oh, stuff it, Hanneman. Unlike you, the professor has a big heart and listens to me talk about any problem I have. More likely, your incessant ramblings offer no chance to interrupt. Is that true, professor? I knew it! You listen to me because you care about me, don't you? Ugh, go away, Hanneman. Leave us alone. And stop making me shout. It causes the old wound to hurt again. Then perhaps you'd best stay quiet. Keep your emotions in check, I'd say. Ugh, don't worry, Professor. We do this all the time. Indeed, Manuela and I do not mix well. Been true for years. That said, if it were up to me, I would prefer speaking to her in a calmer manner. It's not like I enjoy bickering with you. So maybe keep your mouth shut more often. I state that which needs to be heard. For example... I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Same, same. Apologies. I am here because I have new information on the Death Knight's hiding place. What? Really? You could have started with that. Several students have reported possible sightings on the western edge of the sealed forest. While the authenticity of these reports has yet to be verified, it is still a very real possibility. I was thinking I would report this to Seth as a precaution. What? Why? We can't be slow. He's going to get away. Protocol on this matter requires reporting to Seteth, then Lady Rhea, then... Professor, let's leave this old geezer behind and get going. Old geezer? I am barely 15 years your senior. I will not hear such... Stop talking. Let's gather a team and get going. I'll go scout ahead. I'm coming for you, Death Knight. Manuela, wait. It would not do to get yourself killed without someone to avenge you.
Manuela's in a tough spot, Professor. Even if she's only got herself to blame, we cannot abandon her. <laughs> we have plenty of visitors today. Let's stop their annoying rescue attempt. Now that is a woman. Uh-oh. They've noticed me. Here they come. Stay focused. Should I have held back? Practice yields results. I'm on it. I will prevail. That's my cue. You're a big help. down so easily not bad at all
chance to grow. Such power dwells within? I have held back. Obvious. It won't work. A bunch of meddlesome losers. Maybe we should take a hostage for leverage. Capture that woman. We'll show them what the Death God Gang's made of. Death God Gang? What kind of childish nonsense? Where's the Death Knight? Yeah. So obvious. Easy. Yeah. So obvious. Gonna need you to move. That one is expected. It's all becoming clearer. Battle, a chance to grow. You're at a 
luck. It all comes down to this. I have held back. Held back. I won, naturally. I like how this feels. Always nice.
quite what I was after. We are the Death God Gang. We're all unstoppable. Is that all? Manuela, are you uninjured? A few scrapes and bruises, but yes, I'm well enough. How could anyone think that was the Death Knight? It was obviously just an ordinary bandit. Oh well, I may not have found my revenge, but at least we got to retrieve stolen goods. Manuela, you unthinking fool. Hanuman, I've heard enough already. How bloody stupid are you? If that were the real Death Knight, you'd have new, likely fatal wounds to match your first. Do you know how much you worried all of us? You should be ashamed. Oh, no. This is a matter of life and death. It should not and must not be taken lightly. You're right. So there, I said that. It's true, but... Ugh. I'm sorry. I'll apologize to everyone later. I should say I'm sorry as well. I lost my temper just now. I see you act so irrationally and I lose my wits. I care about you a great deal and wish to see you safe. Will you believe me? Yes, of course. I'm the same way after all. I let my emotions get the best of me. <sighs> We're both too old to be shouting all the time. You're awfully quick to put a bow on this. Are you sick of us already, Professor? You're part of this, Professor. We are the only teachers this academy has. No need for bickering. Well said, Hanneman. Would you care to join me for a celebratory drink? That sounds lovely. Perhaps a nice cup of tea is in order. Bye. 
Teacher. Ahem. Ladies and gentlemen, my sincerest apologies for the wait. Thank you for gathering here on the eve of the highly anticipated ball to bear witness to the Academy Wide Dance Competition. Welcome to the White Heron Cup. The competition will be judged by me, your humble servant, Alois Rangel, and also the acclaimed former songstress of the Mittelfrank Opera Company, Manuela Casagranda. Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, and it should go without saying, but I swear to show no bias to my own house. Got it? Good. Last but not least, the glamorous assassin who does all of her dancing in the dead of night, Shamir Nevrand! Hmm. The three of us swear on our honor to judge the following proceedings with utmost impartiality and fairness. And with that, will the representatives of each house please make their way to the stage? Contestants, are you ready to dance? And is the band prepared to play? Very well, begin! That's all, folks! Splendid! All three of you were fantastic! <laughs> now, let's hear what the judges have to say. Oh my, let's see. I suppose I have no choice but to vote for... The Black Eagle House. Your performance was exhilarating. My heart is still beating a mile a minute. I vote for Golden Deer House. Decisive movements, nothing wasted. Great feedback, both of you. Well then, let's see. Factoring in my own humble opinion, yes, we have a winner. And I will announce who it is right now, without any delay, the winner of this year's White Heron Cup is... The Black Eagle House! Have I prevailed? Oh, most glorious! My practice was not in vain! Once more, please give a big round of applause for our talented participants! I apologize for the wait. Thank you. It's 
smells delightful. So it is. <laughs> So it is. I think not. Thank you for the treat. I had a wonderful time. I would love to do this again, if that is acceptable to you. We got through that without trouble. Always was a quick study. I appreciate your effort. Yeah, you just get it, Professor. This is my favorite. Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes. meal how did you know Ooh, this is my favorite you've got great taste scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. I think I like this, but it's been a while, so I'm not sure. You have my thanks. Maybe. I'll 
keep my voice down. Don't want people thinking I'm vying for attention. But how loud is too loud? I may sound terrible, but you won't notice when everyone else sings, too. told that your house won the White Heron Cup. This can only be a result of the students' talent and effort, not to mention your steadfast instruction. I have looked into Tomas, but I just cannot make sense of this at all. From his behavior up and I have also... It is almost... The ball is tomorrow. I have no worthwhile memories of such events, yet I'm still looking forward to this one. As am I, in the sense that I look forward to destroying all of the unworthy suitors who will inevitably swarm Lady Edelgard. I will admit, Edelgard is adorable. However, when it comes to elegance on the dance floor, I am superior. You're not a bad dancer, Ferdy, but you do have some moves that are hard to watch. You honor me with your kind words. I understand that I am sometimes too dazzling to behold directly. I'm envious of your positive attitude. I also know how to dance, in theory. Maybe I should participate as well. Not me! You wouldn't catch me dancing at a ball any sooner than you'd catch a fish swimming through the sky! <laughs> well, you do tend to flop around like a fish on the land after all. But why would you say that? Now I feel like a fish on a skillet. On a skillet? <laughs> Never mind. Speaking of the ball, do we get to pick who we dance with? I wonder who I should ask. A bold subject change. Should Lady Edelgard wish it, I would be honored to. I will fight with all that I have within me. Fighting? No, that's not really the point. I will not be as a fish upon the flame! Um, okay. I have a proposition. Let's all agree to meet back at the monastery exactly five years from today. Like a class reunion? It's a great idea. Five years from today will be the Millennium Festival for Garrig Mach Monastery. I've heard the magnitude of the festivities will exceed all prior years. Oh, how exciting! Sounds like a great excuse to come visit our dear professor. You will be seeing how much growing I have done. You will be pleased, professor. This idea is good. Who knows where each of us will be in five years' time, or who we will become. Still, I have faith that all of us will gather and celebrate our reunion. That's assuming the professor is still here in five years, and not enjoying a cozy early retirement. <laughs> Even if that's the case, you will come, won't you? Whether or not you're still teaching here. Don't forget, my teacher. Even if the Millennium Festival should be cancelled, I promise to return here.
running away? I understand. You hardly had the time to breathe in there. It must be hard to be the favorite teacher at the ball. <laughs> poor, poor professor. So you do think you're the favorite? <laughs> I might have known. But where is there to run? This place is filled with joyful students looking for a dance. Ah, I see. The Goddess Tower waits for you. Here you are. Are you waiting for someone? For me? Well, you should have summoned me earlier. Regardless, here I am. No, nothing in particular. In fact, that's why I came here. This place, the Goddess Tower, it was special to my parents. My father attended the Officer's Academy himself. A few years after graduating, he was crowned emperor. One day, during a visit to the monastery, he snuck into the goddess tower on a nostalgic whim. And there she was, my mother. She had just enrolled in the academy that very year. They were instantly drawn to each other. Love at first sight, you could say. It was the first time either had truly been in love. Or so the story goes. Yes. Of course, as Emperor, my father had already married for political reasons. As the Empire demands many heirs, he also had numerous other lovers. In the end, my mother settled for becoming one of his many consorts. But I choose to believe there was genuine love between them. <laughs> I suppose it's a silly story to cling to. Isn't it? It's a shame that the lovely stories ended after I was born. For as long as I can remember, my mother had already been exiled from the capital. It's strange. Something about you makes me reveal all of the things I so carefully keep concealed. Anyway, what about you? It's your turn to reveal some long-held secret. You can share a story about your past, or perhaps tell me about your first love. You're telling the truth. I can tell. Hmm. I wasn't even able to make you blush. <laughs> no, I'm the one who should apologize. It wasn't my intention to pry. I'm just intrigued by you and your mysterious past. You have supposedly always been a mercenary, but I believe there's more to your story than that. Let's leave it there for today and return to the ball. There must be plenty of students hoping to talk with you, and to dance with you. I would not wish to prevent you from mingling. I cannot keep you all to myself, after all. It seems that everyone is having a delightful time. Will you not dance some more? dull of you. Had I a body of my own? Oh, I would sing and dance until I fell upon the ground. But you, <laughs> do as you will. Oh, you're not the only one who feels that way. Look over there. Hmm, I'm bored beyond compare. Will you not follow her? Oh, come on, hurry up! I know that you are curious to see what she is up to. I hear... someone singing... from over there.
song. I feel that I have heard it in the past. Actually, it is not that I have heard it. I... Did I once sing that song to someone? No. There's more. I wrote this song. Oh, but how could that be so? If that were true, then how could she be singing it? Unless... No, no. I am suddenly so exhausted. As are you, no doubt. Quickly then, to bed with you. Captain? Captain! Where are you? Hey, Professor, have you seen your old man? Too bad. I guess it will have to be you, then. I'm back. Sorry for the delay. My last mission took longer than expected. Captain! Thank goodness you're here. There are reports of demonic beasts near the chapel. Nonsense. I haven't heard anything about the monastery's walls being breached. That's why I'm heading there now, to see what's really going on. You'll join as well, won't you? Of course. We're both sworn to protect this place. It's odd. Just before they appeared, someone saw a number of students heading toward the chapel. They were apparently acting strange, as though they weren't in their right minds. Shortly after, demonic beasts started to appear, one after another. Hmm. The students. There's no way those demonic beasts got in from the outside. But none of that matters right now. We need to act. Go summon your students. Damn it. I wanted to talk to you about something important, but there's no time. Oh, there's never any damn time. But this is much more urgent, so it can hold for now. I'll meet you there.
are demonic beasts here. They're emerging from the chapel. I'll head that way. The rest of you, protect the students who weren't able to get away. Help me! These beasts, they're... Uh, somebody, help me! You stupid beasts! Don't you dare come over here! I'm on it. Gonna need you to move. Ferdinand von I. Stay focused. Allow me to demonstrate. to take shape. As you wish. I will get the victory. something on its forehead.
victory. Thank you! But my friends who couldn't get away, are they okay? Think you can keep going? Don't push yourself too hard. Thinking about what happened at Ramire Village, it's clear you've gotten the hang of being a leader. Maybe you should have taken command of me too. <laughs> Do it all. 
Sorry. That was a close one. <gasps> you saved me! Thank you. Trace of evidence to be found in the chapel. This must have something to do with Remire. Perhaps. Wait! Huh? Another student? Run along now. Thanks for all your help, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a pathetic old man. How dare you get in the way of my brilliant plan, dog. Run along now. Thanks for all your help, sir. <laughs> Because there is still a role that I require you to fulfill. Sorry. It looks like I'm going to have to leave you now. The first time I saw you cry, your tears would be for me. It's sad, and yet, I'm happy for it. Thank you, kid. So this is where your father lived. Hmm? Are you still crying? If turning back the hands of time was not enough to save his life, you must accept what came to pass was fate. Agreed. We cannot let the wicked ones run free. Your father said to look for something here. He must have been referring to whatever is behind that bookcase there. Your father's diary? Huh. His handwriting is prettier than his face would suggest. Well, well. These entries here are from before your birth. He seems to have been writing this for quite some time. There. Horsebow Moon. Year 1159. Day 20 of the Horsebow Moon. All is cloudy. I can't believe she's dead. Lady Rhea said she died during childbirth. But is that the truth? And still, the child she traded her life for doesn't make a sound. Didn't even cry at birth. Day 25 of the Horsebow Moon. It's raining. The baby doesn't laugh or cry. Not ever. Lady Rhea says not to worry about a baby that doesn't cry. It isn't natural. I had a doctor examine the child in secret. He said the pulse is normal, but there's no heartbeat. No heartbeat. Day 2 of the Wyvern Moon. Sunny. I feel I must take the child and leave but the church is always watching us. 
I don't know what Lady Rhea has planned. I used to think the world of Lady Rhea. Now I'm terrified of her. Day 8 of the Wyvern Moon. More rain. I used the fire that broke out last night to fake the child's death. Lady Rhea is in a state over the news, but I can't change what I've done. I've got to take the child and leave. Well now, that baby must be you. That means... Hmm? Someone is approaching us. Ah, here you are. To think that Captain... that Geralt would meet his end like that. I hope you know that you were the most important thing in the world to him. He wasn't the most emotional guy. I'm sure expressing his affection wouldn't have come naturally to him. After what's happened, it's up to me now. I, Alois, swear to protect you in the captain's stead. <sighs> Sorry. This isn't the time for my blathering. Lady Rhea is looking for you. I came to tell you that. I'll take my leave now. This book is filled with secrets yet unknown. We must return another time to read the rest. Oh, but I have at least figured one thing out. I know now why our fates are intertwined. Professor, I have been waiting for you. I am filled with grief at the loss of our most celebrated knight. Gerald was an ally of many years, and also a dear friend. He fell in love with one of the nuns here at Garagmark. Their love produced a child, whom she died giving birth to. It was her decision. She weighed her own life against that of her child's and, in the end, implored me to save the child. Your father never truly accepted that decision. He took the child, took you, and disappeared without warning. Your mother, she was my... I'm sorry for the interruption, Lady Rhea. There's something you must hear immediately. A report from the knights patrolling the area. Very well. Professor, you are dismissed for the day. Please rest and focus only on mending your heart. Understood? <laughs>